All right, so I got a fun toy in the mail today. And this is a low-end oscilloscope. Um, pretty much if anybody is not familiar with what an oscilloscope is, it's pretty much a voltage meter. You know, you test your batteries to see if they're dead. That's a voltage meter. Uh, the difference though is an oscilloscope will show you the voltage over time. And so you get these interesting waveforms. Uh, right now I have a sawtooth pattern being genera generated right now. So this is my uh, signal generator. So let's go ahead and change the waveform. And I'll show you like a, a sine wave. There we go. And let's, let's just play with uh, the frequency a little bit. And so you can see like I can do certain things. This is mainly just me playing around and verifying that what I throw out with that thing, I'm, I'm seeing the same thing over here. Um, what I didn't realize when I got this, I, I've been holding off on this thing mainly because there's uh, software on here that uh, I really would like to use, but it was locked out. And you'd have to pay an arm and a leg to actually uh, upgrade that software. So let me go to the utility. Where's the utility? Am I not looking at the right stuff? Their IO settings, there we go. Wait, that's not what I'm looking for. <laughs> Maybe it's under system, no. Oh, I know where it is. Wait, options, installed. So here, you can see all these options. Normally, uh, when this product first came out, I think in 2014, all this software would uh, start up with a 20 hour trial period. And if you went to YouTube, you saw a ton of people who would hack this. Uh, they would get the serial number associated with the machine, go online somewhere and generate a key, and then uh, apply it to here and get all of this software unlocked uh, automatically, free. Uh, the thing is, when I, when I picked this up the other day on Amazon, I thought this was still a problem. <laughs> and I thought, well, maybe I can hack it. You know, I, I've seen a lot of stuff on YouTube. I go to the screen and I'm like, oh, everything's already included and uh, I went on to the Amazon site just looking at the product listing and sure enough it listed it stated that all software was free so I'm like yes <laughs> back in the day I think it was like a, 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 over a thousand dollars to unlock all that software which uh, to me was like whoa that's like great value and then uh, I'm looking at it today, and uh, they're listing the bundle for all the softwares, $300 on one of the Rigel websites. Um, so yeah, this is still twice the amount that, uh, well, almost twice the amount that I thought I was getting for the value. I think because it's such an old machine, or not a machine, but an old model number, uh, they were able to keep it competitive with today's oscilloscopes, sort of, just by unlocking all the software automatically, and all of a sudden, blam, you've got a, uh, a very competitive oscilloscope for entry level. Uh, yeah, professional oscill oscilloscope, much, much, many more pennies. Ah, <laughs> uh, man, um, this thing we're going to have a lot of fun with. I've got a few projects that I'm starting up at home. I'm gonna just turn this uh, probe off for now. Oh, well, that's one of the first things I had to do is calibrate all my probes. And uh, they give you these nice color rings. So all, all of my probes go specifically to the color of the uh, jack there. So I know which probes are cal calibrated for what areas. And let me turn off my signal generator. There we go. And let's go ahead and turn this off. The one thing I don't like about this is it has a long boot up time. 
And I would have liked all the logic analyzers, but uh, that'd be a little bit more pricey to, to grab. Um, but anyway, these are some of the projects that I'm working on. Uh, I like to play with retro computers. Uh, this this one taught me a lot about machine language um, on the 8080 processor. Pretty much the first Intel PC processor. I, I think like the, one of the, I don't know which, which computers came with it. I don't know if the PC Junior came with it for the IBM. But there used to be a big blue box called the Altair 8800. Very infamous. Uh, I think Bill Gates used it and programmed, uh, I don't know if it was BASIC or DOS or both of them. And like the first time he ran it, it everything worked. <laughs> um, so this, this has a lot of history to it. Uh, the 1802 also has a lot of history as it was... Um, and processor was used in the uh, Galileo spacecraft. And um, pretty much this guy, this is just an interface to the microchip. There's a microchip in the bottom. This actually fits in an Altoids can. And actually, the, uh, there's there's a top and a bottom to this. It's much easier if I just unscrew things and then take things apart. I should have put the, uh, the user interface on the bottom so I can open up the tin lid uh, but there's an 1802 chip in there and uh, I learned a little bit about machine language with that flipping these switches and just entering memory addre addresses into the memory one at a time and then running my programs uh, this one's set up so you can actually run a serial port to your computer instead of having to enter it all in yourself but I like the idea of flipping all the switches and, and doing that the Altair has an SD card, <laughs> so that's even nicer. And you even have like a, a PS2 port for your keyboard and a component or a monitor and composite monitor and a PGA out, so you can actually use this as an actual PC. <laughs> uh, this is the computer that I grew up with. This is why I'm in the profession that I am in today. Uh, this has a chip that is called the um, 6502, provided by Moss Technologies. And for its time, it was the cheapest chip out there. Uh, it, CPU chips were very expensive in the 70s. Uh, this thing came out in 75, the, the chip itself. Um, and it was a $25 chip where I think most other CPU chips were in, it, it was over $100. I'm not sure if they were in the $300 range, though. But the price point was so inexpensive that it became possible to make a lot of computers that could go into the home that people could afford. Uh, this this one here, um, I think it was very expensive, actually, given the, uh, if you look at inflation and what my parents probably made back in the day, uh, this had actually sat in my parents' room at first, and uh, it was off limits. But then, uh, much later, uh, my brother and I would program on this all the time. We get blisters on our fingers, uh, especially you see the white has a raised lip, and we had to press down so hard before it would register. And uh, we would spend hours programming from lists that... Uh, you know, we get blisters from that. Um, and in a sense, you could say we were some of the first, <clears throat> some of the first people to actually do pair programming where uh, one of us would read from, take turns reading from a book and the other would actually program. And then we'd have to go through and debug why, why the uh, program wasn't running. Um, but it would be nice to see this actually up and running again. And then I also have a, a C6502, no, not C6502, 65CO2 kit coming that uh, has a better processor based on the same architecture, just has a little bit more instructions and can run at faster speeds than this. This is like uh, 1.7 uh, megahertz with um, 16 kilobytes of RAM. So I'll be playing uh, with 64K of RAM on the computer that I'm going to build. And uh, I'll be running 
much faster. I think up to 17 megahertz. Now, if you look at a regular computer <laughs> down there and, and compare the, the speed, it's much, much Sorry, more. Computer, know. stop. Oh, you can tell what my wake word is for my computer now, can't you? <laughs> So, yeah, I am extremely happy with, with what I've got. Um, this is missing the logic probes or the digital logic stuff. Um, but for the most part, I have, um, you know, I have plenty of Arduino Unos and the Mega. So I can pretty much do the same thing with this for uh, capturing data data that's coming across the line on multiple pins. Where is it? Yeah, I have a lot of more stuff. I even have like the Raspberry Pis. I don't know why the Arduinos are up in here as well, but yeah. Oh man. Oh, here's like one of my, here's my current oscilloscope that I had prior to this, which is right there. You know, a five megahertz oscilloscope can only go so far and, you know, it has its limits. But, uh, oh yeah, and this is like, these are the steps to assemble the board. You could get it assembled already for, e for you, but uh, the model number, DSO-138. So, yeah, fun stuff.